Favorite color? Uh, blue, sometimes. Sometimes? Sometimes. What is it when it's not? Um, probably like purple. I like to change my color okay. a little bit. So I like to throw a lob at Rupp Arena in about 10 seconds after you check in. Um, a little nerve wracking at first. I'm very excited Joe caught that lob, honestly. Were you, were you thinking, did Marty think like, what happens if this doesn't come off right? Oh yeah, that ran through my head after I threw the lob. Um, <laughs> once Joe caught it, I like, like it kind of took a second for it to run. I was like, oh, he caught it. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Have you ever seen Joe jump so high? No, I turned the clock back on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Rick talked about a conversation you guys had before that game where you said, I'm going to go get us an extra possession. Where does that mindset come from and kind of how did you develop that? Oh, honestly, just trying to fill my role and figuring out my role as I go along this journey. Um, just trying to be an energy spark to this team off the bench or whatever they need me to do when I go on again. As a guy who's probably been a shooter for much of his basketball career, how do you find that role of doing different things? Um, honestly, just feeling around, seeing where I got to go and talking to him. He's he's really kind of shed some, shed some light on it and told me, like, hey, this is what you need to do if you want to get on the court. So just trying to follow that step by step. How have things been here compared to what you thought they might be? Um, it's very hard. I feel like I expected it to be hard, and it was 10 times harder once I got here. So I'm just, once again, trying to figure it out. Did you learn anything different about yourself in the game you play against LSU? Um, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I figured out, like, time to score and – there's always time for teams to come back. Uh, learning, once again, my role and trying to stay inside those boundaries. Where are you finding your role is? I'm an energy, like an energy giver once I'm on the court and someone they, they can rely on to run and get fast break layups, uh, rebound, and not to be a, a weak point on defense and be able to carry energy through whenever I sub whoever out. How hard is it to kind of get used to the way Rick Barnes coaches? Because obviously he's hard on you guys, and how have you seen yourself kind of get used to it? Um, it was a little hard at first. It was kind of like listening to his tone. I was like, man, like, he's really getting after me. But then I had to take a second, take a step back and be like, well, I got to listen to what he's saying and not how he's saying it. So. What's the challenge of preparing every game, knowing some games might not play, then four or five games later you will? It's a way of preparing the same way every game. Um, honestly, just being prepared mentally, just always staying engaged and ready for my moment, whatever my moment is, and taking full advantage of it. Do you think you would get that moment at Kentucky based on that conversation, or was that a surprise? Um, honestly, I go into the game thinking the same thing. I was like, if I don't play, I'm okay. If I do, I got to take advantage of however much time they give me. If it's 30 seconds, 40 seconds, two and a half minutes, just go in there with the same mindset every single day. Have there been any veterans on this team that you kind of turned to to help you find your role or look to as leaders? Um, honestly, all of them, really. I would say Zakai, Shaq, uh, Josiah, Santi. They've all done a really good job of showing me, like, hey, I know it's hard right now. It was hard my freshman year, their freshman year as well, and they're just trying to keep me just on the right path of where I need to be looking and like where I need to be going. Have you had any conversations with JP as he's had a few minutes as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk about it all the time. I just we both try to be each other's helper, if that makes sense. Uh, try to tell each other like, hey, I know it sucks right now, but you're gonna figure it out. We're both gonna figure it out. We're gonna be we're gonna be just fine. What about playing on the road at this level? Like the noise, the hostility. What did you sort of envision it being like in your mind, and, and has it been like that? Um, honestly, it was a bit of an eye-opener. I'll say the first one that really like shocked me a little bit was probably Mississippi State. That was that one was a little bit of a holy crap <laughs> the SEC. But uh, honestly, just trying to stay engaged, act like I'm playing in an empty gym, as hard as it is, but that's, that's how I try to go into every game. Which guy or guys on the defensive end do you kind of watch to get tips from and ideas from? Um, honestly, they all bring something different. I try to look at Joe for like placement and where I need to be. And he's a guard kind of like me or like a three, four, whatever you want to say. And he's got length and he, he does a very good job of keeping space and keeping someone in front of him. And so I look at him for like placement and stuff. I would say Santi for knowing what to do in just like certain types of situations as like if I'm running a person off a screen, if I'm guarding up, like guarding the ball, play, guarding the ball screen, whatever. And Zakai just how hard he plays, Shaq, how hard he plays, and just trying to always being in possessions and keeping themselves in possessions. Is there anyone in particular you go up against during practice when it comes to defensive stuff? Uh, DK. Yeah, DK. That, that'd probably be my... Are you saying like defense as when in like I'm guarding them? Yeah. Oh, yeah, probably DK or JG sometimes, Freddie. Kind of like it's a mixture of all of them. Coach Barnes said that uh, you asked him what you need to do to find the way onto the floor. You know, as a freshman, to take that sort of accountability. Why did you feel like you wanted to do that to help contribute to your team? Um, honestly, I had to. It wasn't necessarily a, a thing of 
what Cameron wants to do in the moment. As hard as it is, like I gotta move my pride aside. Like maybe I'm not playing the most, I'm not able to help the team right now. But I just asked him, I was like, hey, whatever I can do to help this team win in any type of situation, any type of time and place, wherever you need me to be. I was like, I'll do it. I have no, I'm not butt hurt that I'm not playing the most. I've kind of taken this as a learning, like a learning curve and knowing that I'll have to, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a get there eventually. And I just got to keep working, take, get 1% better every single day. Well, you talked about guarding connect and practice. What, describe that challenge. Because I think mean, it seems like nobody's holding him below 25 these days. Um, yeah, man, he's an elite scorer. I'll say that's as elite as I've seen. Um, honestly, just trying to learn from his game and learning that he makes it look effortless when he scores. Sometimes you look up at the thing, you're like, man, he's got 25, and it feels like he only has like six. But um, honestly, just every day, just learning little bits and pieces from like what he does to score and where I can take that and put that into my game as well. How does that help you come game time when you are going up against one of the more elite shooters in the conference or college basketball? Um, honestly, it helps a lot knowing that if I can, I think if I can sometimes stop him, uh, I think I can stop some other people as well. But uh, just learning like distance and how to guard. I've never been labeled as an elite defender or I'm still not labeled that as yet, but I'm still trying to learn that. So it helps going against him every single day. Anything else for Cam? All right, thanks. Thanks, Cam. Thanks,